my heart goes out to him. He lost his son. Neighbors of a man who admitted causing a fire that killed three people at a Winchester apartment complex say they feel sorry for him, but are they ready to forgive him? A strange scene in a Lexington parking lot tonight. What caused a moped to get stuck under a moving SUV and burst into flames? And the UK women's basketball team is very happy with their placement in the NCAA tournament. Find out where the Cats will be playing. This is WKYT News at 11. And good evening. Some storms moving through parts of the state today, and a few of them were strong at times. But it looks like we'll have better weather for our Tuesday. We begin tonight with meteorologist Jim Caldwell and your no wait weather forecast. Yeah, it looks fantastic out there for us tomorrow. What we have to get through are the remaining showers tonight. And we have a few across parts of eastern Kentucky. It's almost completely cleared the area, but we're still tracking the showers from Moorhead down to Sandy Hook into West Liberty. All of these areas. Really got to see some of the heavier rounds of showers and storms earlier today. We even had a severe thunderstorm warning, a couple, as a matter of fact, that popped out in eastern Kentucky. You go down the road into Hazard and back toward Hyden. This is the last little pocket of even some of the moderate rainfall that I've been tracking tonight. So that will eventually get out of here. So as we look at our skycast for tonight, around 54, that scattered chance still ongoing across parts of eastern Kentucky. But here's what's going to be nice when we get into the daytime hours tomorrow. 74, mix of sun and clouds, and I really think it's going to be more sun than the cloud cover. It should be a fantastic day for you. So a little summer light because I think we're going to have a little trace of humidity out there. It's going to make it feel a little more uncomfortable. So our focus on the forecast, though, it's not the warmth of tomorrow. It's that cooler trend, and it is coming. I'll track that chill coming up for you at 11-11, guys. Jim, thank you. He says he's sorry for what happened, but he doesn't think he should be charged with manslaughter. Today, the man arrested after a fire that killed three people in a Winchester apartment building gave an exclusive interview with WKYT from jail. Jackie Heisel Jr.'s son was among those who died in that fire. And new tonight, Kristen Candy talked to some people who lived in the building to get their thoughts about what Heisel had to say. It's our top story at 11. People who lived at this apartment complex on Spring Mist Lane are trying to save what they can find in the ashes. Many lost everything. Three people lost their lives. The man investigators say started the fire, Jackie Heisel, apologized in an exclusive interview on WKYT. Things I wish I could have done, and things I wish I'd done different. Yeah, I regret it. Like I say, I, I regret it every day. Heisel lost his own son in the fire that he says started when he was smoking and drinking near his oxygen tank. Everybody not, knows not to smoke around the oxygen tank, but I mean, I, I guess if you're drinking and having a good time, I mean, stuff happens. Scarlett Lawson was Heisel's neighbor. My heart goes out to him. He lost his son. People living here set up makeshift memorials for the three who died. Funerals were held today for two of the victims, Dixie Everman and Donald Heisel. I believe he's sorry. I believe, you know, a lot of it was maybe alcohol related. Jessica Moore lived beside him. She watched his interview and told us she's not ready to forgive, but she does feel bad for him. There's a lot of things that happened. My, my, my children had to sit and watch everything that they own go up in flames. In Winchester, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Heisel pled not guilty to three counts of manslaughter today. He is being held on a $1 million bond. It grabbed the attention of people in that area. Tonight we are learning more about what led to a moped getting stuck under an SUV and then catching fire in Lexington. The driver of the SUV pulled into a parking lot on Fortune Court off Fortune Drive after it happened. Garrett Weimer is tracking the investigation tonight. It's a story that's new at 11. Employees at Gray Bar Electric say the scene in their parking lot provided a bit of a shock right before they left work for the day. No, it makes for an interesting Monday. <laughs> Police say it started somewhere else with an argument between teenagers. They say teens inside an SUV stole money from a teen on a moped, then took off. Police say the teen on the moped followed the SUV to the stoplight at Winchester Road and Fortune Drive. Police say the teen on the moped reached into the car to try to get his money back. That's when police say the SUV made a U-turn to try to get away, but it took the moped with it. 
The teen was able to get off the moped and wasn't hurt, but pieces of the moped litter the two tenths of a mile to Fortune Court. A um, car came pulling down through here, uh, dragging a scooter. Uh, it pulled into our driveway right there at the end uh, on fire. Uh, flames coming up the side. Guys just jumped out of it, uh, kind of just took off running that way. Witnesses say one of their co workers ran outside with a fire extinguisher and put the fire out. Police say the teen on the moped got his money back and he was okay. Yeah, you don't want to see somebody get hurt like that. News those who saw the end unfold were happy to hear. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Police say they were told a gun was involved, but they say but they say what they found was not a real gun. New Night Winchester police have released surveillance pictures of a man wanted in connection to a bank fraud case. They say the case involves an ATM, but they didn't provide any more details. They say a similar crime happened in a nearby city, so they think the suspect may not be from Winchester. The sight of it caught many people by surprise. Tonight, a professional kayaker is talking about why he decided to ride over Cumberland Falls. Video of the stunt went viral over the weekend. Kayakers Nick Troutman and Dane Jackson both rode their kayaks over the falls. Troutman says it was the result of many hours of training and 15 years of kayaking professionally. We did not expect the video to go viral. We did not expect people necessarily to even be there watching it. It was more of just a personal goal that we had set. Both men were cited for trespassing, and that could cost them a couple hundred dollars apiece. State parks leaders discourage people from doing anything like this because they say the falls are extremely dangerous. New tonight, a national organization says it's worried about a bill that would allow classes about the Bible to be taught in Kentucky public schools. The bill received unanimous approval from the Senate Education Committee last week. Supporters say the Bible would be taught as literature and the class would not be a requirement for students. But the Anti-Defamation League said tonight it has, quote, deep concern that the bill would result in the unconstitutional teaching of religious doctrine in public schools. The organization says the bill needs safeguards to make sure that doesn't happen. New tonight, a bill that would allow early voting without an excuse has passed the Kentucky House. This bill now moves on to the Senate. It would allow any registered voter in Kentucky to vote early, at least 12 working days leading up to the Sunday before Election Day. The early voting period would include two Saturdays. Kentucky Secretary of State Allison Lundergan Grimes is pushing for the bill, but opponents say early voting would be difficult for county clerk offices with small staffs. Also new tonight, it appears a proposal to build a homeless shelter in Jessamyn County is moving forward. In a Facebook post tonight, the Jessamyn County Homeless Coalition said Nicholasville City Commissioners have approved the shelter. The city had to change the wording of a zoning classification before plans for the shelter could continue. Tonight, the UK women's basketball team has a reason to celebrate. The Cats found out who they'll be playing and where in the NCAA tournament. And as Rob Bromley tells us, it will be home sweet home for the Cats. Rob? <laughs> Well, that's right. The UK women's team could make a final four appearance by winning two games in the Coliseum and two more in Rupp Arena. Tonight, the Cats getting the word on ESPN that they are the three seed in the Lexington region. They will play UNC Asheville in the Coliseum Saturday. It's the opportunity that this team was looking for. Just grateful the committee put us in Lexington. I think it's going to be outstanding. We have to really work hard to, uh, to, uh, you know, get a victory in the first round, but the prospects of being able to play in Lexington Sweet 16 is exciting, and our uh, team needs to work hard, but our community really needs to come out and, and buy some tickets and support it no matter who's in the region. Notre Dame is the number one seed in the Lexington region, Maryland number two. The game Saturday will be at 4 o'clock and televised by ESPN2. Rob, thanks so much. The women's team is playing in the NCAA for a school record seventh straight year. Tonight, the presidential candidates are making their final pitches to voters ahead of five crucial primaries tomorrow. For Republicans, John Kasich and Marco Rubio, tomorrow could be a make or break day for their campaigns. Weijia Jiang has the latest from the campaign trail. Donald Trump told supporters in Youngstown, Ohio, he's focusing on helping Americans rather than his form. I'm more interested in having jobs in this country than I am acting presidential, okay? Get him out of here. Trump's rivals have been raising concerns about the tone of his rallies. One difference between this and a Donald Trump rally is I'm not asking anyone to punch you in the face. 
Protesters repeatedly interrupted Trump in Tampa Monday. These people are crazy. Ohio Governor John Kasich says Trump has gone too far. Well, I think that when you run a campaign where you're dividing one against another, or making these incendiary comments at a rally, that's a toxic environment. Trump and Kasich are tied in Ohio. The winner-take-all primary is a must-win for Kasich. Marco Rubio needs to win here in Florida to keep his campaign alive, but Trump is leading the state's senator by a more than two-to-one margin. This state will elect 99 delegates to one person. And I want it to be me, and I need you to help it to be me. Democrats Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders are neck and neck in Illinois. Sanders is focusing on Midwestern states after his upset win in Michigan. I think we're going to win in Ohio tomorrow. Clinton is trying to attract blue collar workers. I will stop dead in its tracks any trade deal that hurts America. More than 1,000 delegates are up for grabs Tuesday. Weijia Jiang, CBS News, Key Biscayne, Florida. Along with Florida, Ohio, and Illinois, voters in Missouri and North Carolina also head to the polls tomorrow. New tonight, investigators have released some more details about the shooting death of a police officer outside a Maryland police station. Police say that Michael Ford began firing shots randomly outside the station as his brothers recorded everything. Now, during the confusion, police now say that the fallen officer, J.K. Colson, was shot by one of his colleagues as he responded to the scene. Police say that Colson, an undercover narcotics officer, was wearing civilian clothes and was not wearing body armor. Ford and his brothers were arrested. New tonight, a newly released police report is giving more details about a shooting spree in Michigan last month that left six people dead. The report claims the suspect, Jason Dalton, told police that he was being controlled by an Uber app through his cell phone. Investigators say he carried out the shootings in Kalamazoo in between driving for Uber. Police also say he warned his wife that she wouldn't be able to return to work and she would understand by watching TV news. Police say the shootings were all random. Police in Laurel County say a man's target shooting got out of control. They say some of his shots hit two homes. Police say people on Barberville Road near London called to complain. Police arrested 42-year-old Calvin Barger. Police say he was target shooting in his yard when one of the rounds hit a nearby roof. They say another round went into the bathroom of a second home. A man who lives there says one of the bullets nearly hit his wife. When I talked to my neighbor over there, he said they were shooting guns over there across the hillside from our house. and. Just, just like a war zone. Police charge Barger with criminal mischief and wanton endangerment. New tonight, a yellow decal on your car window can help first responders if you're injured in a crash. Kentucky State Police are taking part in the Yellow Dot program along with the Knox County Sheriff's Office and other law enforcement agencies. If you put a yellow sticker on one of your car's windows, that will tell first responders that you have a medical condition they need to know about. You'll also need to fill out a pamphlet with that medical information. The officer will know right away when he sees this yellow decal to go to the glove box and retrieve this information. You can get a yellow dot at any state police post or the Knox County Sheriff's Office. Sounds like a good idea. Absolutely.